Boo. I'm here. Hello, Team Cave Dweller. It is I, the Sprouse. Muy late. I am muy late. Muy tardes. Not the tardes. I'm almost an hour late for this episode this week, so we are... Technically, we are... Here. But we're just going to throw the clock back and say that we're here. When the hour gets to here, we'll have a commercial. When it gets back to here, we'll have some fun. When it gets up to here, we'll be done. And when it gets over to here, we'll do some more fun. Game Dweller! If you don't like looking at me sideways, go watch me live on YouTube. We have two cams going, two live cams. YouTube, the Scrouse Tyrannus. Instagram, the underscore Scrouse is me. I am here. Welcome aboard. I have better audio on YouTube. This cam right here. It's less of a cam and more of a suitcase. Suitcase cam. It's really kind of a desk on your lap cam. Today is episode of Image for Hire. Live painting with the Scrouse is brought to you by this sack of slivered almonds that I got in a pile of garbage today that I found. Expiration date 07-17-16. A year that will go down in infamy. Summer of love. Summer of me watching Trump decimate his enemies in the political arena. So wonderful. So cathartic. Watching Donald Trump slaughter his opponents. It was like the final scene in Fight Club where they blow up the banks. So great. It makes me wish that I could believe that... Excuse me. I, it makes me wish that I could believe... It makes me wish that I could... It makes me wish that Trump was everything he says he is. Man, wild card, man of the people, man of action, not shill of the deep state. I don't know. We'll never know. That's the nature of the deep state. You can't prove it. Nobody believes it exists. You know what I'm saying? No comments? Join me. With an expiration date of Trump's ascendancy, they still taste delicious. I'm going to wash it down with... Today's episode is brought to you by two things. Those slivered almonds I found laying around and... Wait for it. Slivered almonds I found laying around in no name brand sparkling water in a green bottle. Listen to the fizz. It's delightful. So, cheers. And always remember that when you're drinking out of the bottle, don't cover the oh, aperture, don't cover the top with your top lip. Just put it on there and let it glook, glook, glook into your mouth. Now then, here's what we got. Get some, I guess, YouTube, you're kind of the close-up cam. You got the full picture. Instagram, hey, viewer, what's up? My studio, thank you for joining me. All right, so today I'm simulcasting. On, I shouldn't have eaten those slivered almonds. They're ending up all over my face. I'm not saying I eat like a slob. It just ends up that way. Now then, I got these two paintings that I've been working on. This is the first painting of the series. This is the penultimate painting of the series. Actually, this is not the penultimate. It's the third from the end. Number seven. Last week, I painted in a crowd scene here. So I'm just going to go and realize that a little more. So what we have is a division. This is a cover to a comic book that doesn't exist. This would be the front cover. This would be the back cover. That's known as a wraparound. I just learned that term from some high school kids the other day. Wraparound cover. Staple would go right here. This is Virgin of Guadalupe. This is a police call box doubling as her mantle. Night and day. Dead monkey. Montgomery Blanc gets the news that he's dead. And his word balloon is skull shaped. And I need to... This is the top of the police call box. I should paint over that. That's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. Because I want... It disrupts the scalular motif of the word balloon. And I... 
I don't want that. So now I need white. Whoa! I forgot to put the cap back on this tube of paint. I've never done that before. I'm falling apart. Falling apart. I'm 15 minutes late on this episode. That's 5-0, not 1-5. And I'm losing the caps to my paint. And oh, here's my pliers. Well, things are looking up. I found my pliers. Now then, white. If I can find white paint, then we'll really be going to town. Last episode, you saw me in a moment of low energy. And the reason for that was because I had just spent an hour teaching a class, just like the class I'm going to be teaching tonight for the sneak preview, should anybody arrive. This class is cursed. I'm telling you, if anybody arrives for the free sample tonight and on Kenosha's second Saturday at Revision Gallery, I will be overjoyed with gratitude. But the way it's shaping up, every time I turn around, something blocks this class. I don't know why. This class is awesome, and the world needs this class. This is a class in how to draw without knowing how to draw. Imagine drawing without knowing how to draw. I will teach you all the workarounds to drawing. No art school necessitas, necessitas, because it's about communication. For instance, there's a picture of Batman that I drew, I mean painted, in like 10 minutes. You can't really see him because it needs, this actual painting needs work. But I painted him over some marbleized pour over junk and I don't know why that's an example. That's a bad example. Communication. And we can communicate by drawing in symbols, which is the backbone of comics. So it's basically in how to make comics class. Comics and cartooning. Communication, communicating through doodles is another way of describing it. One of the techniques I had the, the kids do that I spoke to last Thursday, I, I had them draw Batman in 30 seconds and then in 10 seconds. This is my version of Batman in 10 seconds. I feel like my marketing for this class has been haphazard. It's because I don't, I don't know how to talk about it. If I say it's cartooning, it's comics and cartooning, then like 10 people will show up out of America. I mean, the population of America. That's the percentage of people that enjoy cartooning that much. If I say it's journaling, then I get housewives who don't necessarily want to draw. If I say it's about finding your soul, which is what I did say, then I get nobody because it sounds like I'm a new age quack. I'm not new age. But I am a quack. I tell people often that I'm an artist. And the first words out of their mouth is, do you make a living as an artist? Is that your main bread and butter? And after I'm done punching them in the face and curb stomping them foreheads, then I raise them up and ask their forgiveness and say, I have a side business. I am in the middle of getting back to the basics of this word balloon. There we go. Done. Now, I'm going to get these characters, all these characters were copied from uh, drawings in a comic books at random that I picked out from Wonder Woman and Lois Lane, two comics that I just happened to have laying around. Oh no, it was Isis and Wonder Woman. No, Isis and Lois Lane, but Wonder Woman guest starred. It's a, the DC Comics universe, the Pantheon, they're always like infecting each other's thing. The DC Pantheon is a bunch of viruses. And before I start, let me just tell you, this is where you can find me. Imageforhire.com, patreon.com slash the Scrouse, and the underscore Scrouse at both Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for your blessing, bald mannequin head. Let's start with some portrait. Okay, oh no, that's right. I was going to, okay, so <coughs> taking the inspiration, I spat it all over the... Dang, nabbit. This is what happens when you paint fast. Anyway, uh, I, um, what was I in the middle of saying? Taking my cue from comics, I'm going to paint every person in this background the same color, including this guy. And that separates the main figures from the background. It's a, basically a graphic design. No painter would do that. A painter would use atmospheric perspective. But I love 
the look in comics of I wanted violet of the monochrome mass the monochrome masses and you know that the masses are monochrome nothing they say or think ever exceeds that specific color get a group of evangelicals together and oh my goodness it's like one cliche after another and the same goes for everybody who voted against Trump I'm afraid to tell you. I hate to break that to you, but you all think alike. I'm assuming, excuse me, I don't want to offend you, but I'm assuming you voted against Trump. My hero. Violet. I'm trying, okay, so I'm going to use this portrait pink light, and I always recommend never mixing hues. This portrait pink light is a mixture already. It's got naphtho, naphtho, uh, some other thing, some kind of orange that I've never heard of. Benzene. Razzalone. Interesting. Anyway, so it mixes white, orange, and red. That's what I'm looking with. And because of the yellow in the orange, it's going to dull this dioxazine purple. But that's fine. Because I don't want it super bright. I think it'll be alright. Mainly what I want this pink for is the white, but yeah, that's not bad. And dioxazine tends to be super bright super apparent, like you can see it, it's almost as bad as the th th phthalo colors, you can see it a mile away in a painting. This isn't bad. This is looking alright. This is looking A-OK. -okay. okay? Here we go. This particular girl was in the comic that I copied her from, she was the girl who turns into Isis. She has a magic word that she screams out and then becomes Isis. Again, I'm not painting in solidly. I'm not painting in... I'm not obliterating. I want the... This, I think, is my own drawing of a, of a kid walking. This is a guy on a street, standing on the street in the Isis comic. This is a guy... Also standing in the street in the ISIS comic. Innocent bystander. I gave him a I gave him an iPhone. Get you a close up action shot here. Boom. Bam. Uh, we're over here. Can you see this? There we go. Tickle tickle. Chiku. Paintings are one tickle after another. And eventually there's so much tickling going on that they just lose control, and I think I like it. Now then, we got that. These guys, further back in the background, same thing. I'm going to let more of the underpainting show through. Underpainting is very important. It's the most important, some might say. I have said. It's what separates man from the animals. shows the evolution of the painting. Okay, this is Lois Lane lifting her arm up and grabbing her purse strap here. They look like mannequins. Right, this guy. Stronger touch of this violet. Now in comics, even their face Everything about them would be this violet color. I don't know if I'm willing to do that at the moment. I'll give this guy some too. Now I'm, I'm mixing it with water so that it, it increases transparency. Well, actually, I actually just made it less transparent. Go around these fingies. This character, the, with the square head, is named Montgomery Blanc. It's kind of a businessman, politician type guy, and this guy that I'm tickling here is his bodyguard. Okay, now I get out the... Get out the good old handy rag. Wipe this off. I want him to look like a bodyguard, not in 
FTD add, which means I'll have to make him darker. So he'll have that tough guy flavor. For my tough guy flavor, I wear red pants. Are you watching this? You can't really see, can you? Wide cam. I'm in the, I'm in the dang way. All right. Now we got something below the threshold of sight. Doing the pants. I'm doing the pants here. Around the nose. Oh, I see. Now this is where. Hmm, maybe I should. Purple. Got the feet. All right. Let's take it back up to here. Thanks for sticking around and watching. Uh, this is probably not that interesting, but I appreciate your company while I paint. If you have any comments, just let me know or any questions. All right, Cave Dwellers or on YouTube. Thanks for being here, one concurrent viewer. I love the analytics on these things. So look at the analytics after I'm done streaming, before I download the video to, ed to edit it together. But I look at the analytics and it tells me how many concurrent viewers I've had and the average, and the complete time viewed, and the average time per person viewed. Last episode, it was six seconds per person. I have four people. That's not even a minute. I was on for an hour. I bear no malice. Because Galactus is for lesser beings. Let's turn this more towards the camera angle. Now, so, okay, we've got the, the yellow sidewalk because it's daylight. We've got this girl's leg. I don't want... Now I'm trapped. I don't know if I want to, if I actually want to make them violet. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out the big transparency guns and use Ultramarine Violet. Uh, no name brand. It does all your transparency purple needs. It is the Prussian blue of violet. I'll practice on this guy's head. I need a bigger brush for this guy's head and some water. There we go. See that? Now I happen to pick up this brush that shows a lot of texture. I need more paint. And that is antithetical to painting in layers because you want the layer to be, I want the layer to be smooth. I suppose it doesn't matter if it's textured. The texture just adds, by texturing it, by having lines because of the brush stroke, it creates a layer that's not smooth, but optical. It increases the vocabulary of the layer, if I can use that term. To be honest, this is the first time I've ever just gone straight, solid color on a thing in a painting. But you can see by the layer that it's not straight, and I'm going to take some of that out because I like it. I like the incomplacency. Incomplacency is me trying to make a pun with complacency. Uh, and this rag has bit the dust. Our Lady of the Lake, please bless this painting and may we be truly thankful and find a way to surpass the virus and still be social. Senora Guadalupe, may you be pleased with this painting honoring your Catholic deity and protect us from being suckers and from the suckered by the hysterical press and the panic. Protect us from the panic. Okay, we got our patronesses there. Now, we're ready. Some sustenance. Slivered almonds. When I went to Burning Man, I was working in a cafe, doing exactly what I'm doing here, except mixing drinks, or taking orders mostly. That's the best part. The regi working register is the best part, working at a cafe. Can you imagine this? You walk into a tent in the middle of the desert and there's 12 espresso machines going all at once and they have a line behind them, like 12 deep. That's a lot. Anyway, so it's the middle of the night and this kid comes in, he's barely coherent. And as a tip, he offers me some slivered almonds. I said, no thanks, I already ate. I, 
I feel like they were drugs, but I don't know what drug. They look like blanched sliver almonds. Because I denied him, I never found out what they were. I went back to my camp and talked to the heads that were back there, guys who were stoners in the 70s. And I'm like, what are these drugs that look like slivered almonds? And they had no idea. They're like, slivered almonds? But if you know where I can get psilocybin, give me a call. That guy's going to be darker, so I'm just going to make him... I'm breaking out the my favorite gun, Prussian Blue Hue. It's a little, it's a little bright. I don't like that. But maybe the, maybe the purple underneath will subdue it. I don't know. I hope so. Putting it on. Not too, not too concerned about it. I like the brush stroke edge, so I'm going to keep that. I have some black in here. Then I'm going to manifest, manifesto, presto, manifesto. Join us tonight at Revision Gallery, where you'll hear Scrouse say, Everybody, draw Batman in 10 seconds, go! Why Batman? Why do I draw Batman in 10 seconds? Because, well, one, I'm somewhat devoted to the character. I'm somewhat invested in the character. And two, everybody knows what Batman looks like. Everybody can tell who this is. You barely even need to see it, but you're like, oh, that looks like Batman. Even the size of a postage stamp on Instagram. His shoes are black because he's a mobster. He's a teamster mobster. And they're pointy because he's Italian. All right. Some more black in there. Don't get the bottom. I like what's happening happening here. He's, as we go up from the bottom, he becomes more human. So there's still white coming through here. His glasses are really dark. I might want to obscure that later. I'm not sure, but he's not. He's not as. Um, we have the shading and the the light hitting this plane. We we have some of that here too, but the light turns in white. Teamster mobster going on there. I'm gonna give him some more layers so you can see his jacket parting where he's got his hand in his pocket. Now these guys need more. More of the violet. Oh, that's right. I have this magic violet I was just using. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try the magic violet. There he goes. Goodbye, yellow arm. Goodbye, other yellow arm. Oh, I love that hand. Hand came out really nice. Great thing about this transparent is I can put it over everything and the drawing shows through. <laughs> I love this leg and the knee. I almost wish that I could see it through this electronic word balloon. Okay, so the guy on the other end saying, uh, Montgomery Blanc says, dead? You mean alive? Right, he can't quite believe that the peg leg monkey is dead. So the person on the other end of the line says, read my lips, defunct. And in fact, I should paint a little picture of their face here, right? Because it is a smartphone. Defunct. Why does he say defunct? I don't know. I knew the word and I wanted to put it in because I fell in love with the word. But it is what they call in the sauce a darling. This episode of Image for Hire, live painting with the Scrouse, is brought to you by No Name Brand, Green Bottle Sparkling Water. Unfiltered at the source. Ah, it's like the effervescent flow of the bedrock fluids coming out of all farmland. 
and mosey moseying downhill towards Urban Wells. Anyway, this is Guadalupe. She's standing on the moon. Sometimes the moon is moonish. Sometimes it's black. Here I put it black on the bottom. And here's the angel head holding her up. Maybe I'll make him violet too. Let's do it. Because these aren't important characters. Angels, they're not important. If the angel was important, I wouldn't have turned him into Senora Guadalupe. Angels. <laughs> Come on. Who needs them? Useless. Okay, now that's really bright purple. I might have to change that. His hand is something like... Oh, and I want him... I want him transparent because you got to see the pig-like monkey through him. So let's do like this. And I'll have to go back into the pig-like monkey later. Just giving him ball fists. He's got wings. It's kind of like a fish character. In this case, a platypus octopus. Oh yeah, smell that new rag. It smells like the rubber tarp that was been laying on it for the last three weeks. Which should be a lesson to you. Plastics, synthetics, they leach. They leach chemicals into all water products. And apparently, even into fibers. Never eat things or drink things that have been packaged in plastic. These guys in this car are blending together. Notice all the cars are violet as well. Oh, here's a spot I forgot to paint over when I subdued everything. This is a traffic light. I'm using a bristle brush, which is why you see these brush strokes. I'm using a bristle brush, which is why you see... <clears throat> Dang, I'm in the middle of a sentence and then an almond jumps down my throat and lands on my epiglottis. Uh, it's, not, it's not good for communication. Which is why I recommend not eating while you're public speaking. Someday I'll have a quick one. Now then, that blue car seems all right. That blue, it's a little bit darker than that blue, so now it puts them on the same level. I gotta do something about that. <clears throat> okay, it's not perfect. We're still working on it. We're still working on perfecting. I'm gonna finish off these estrogen laced almonds. Sienna, you know I'll always be a pal. Will you marry me, Raw Sienna? Raw Sienna, please marry me today. Why do I have three raw umbers but no raw Sienna? And two burnt Siennas. Oh, come on, man. Raw Sienna is really great because it's raw umber. I've never seen a raw umber shadow in my life. This is going to be ridiculous. Mix it with this weird green, and we get this. Huh, look at that. It's almost the same color as the light post. So, we will fix that by changing the light post. I always recommend adjusting municipal property at every convenience. Because you know the city ain't going to do it. I want to use municipal yellow. I'm going to use instead raw ochre. I mean yellow ochre. There is no raw or cooked ochre. There's only yellow ochre. There's also a red ochre, I believe, but I don't, I've never seen that or worked with it. This is great because it'll look like it's going into the background, fading into the background. The title of this comic is 
the Feast of the Peg Leg Monkey. And you'll notice that the logo is in gray rather than vibrant, bright colors. That's something I thought was clever. But I'm going to have to bring that forward with a bright color. Remember, tonight is Second Saturday. Please come down to the Revision Gallery and visit us, and we'll have snacks and booze and, excuse me, I won't talk with my mouth full and spit food at you. Franklin Berry! Hey! What's up, buddy? And Robert Lawrence Studio. Hey, how's it going? One idea at a time. Now, I'm going to take you up close and personal. In the way, you'll have a ringside seat. It's even better than a ringside seat. Imagine if you're at a basketball game and I sat you down on the court. That's what is happening here. Making it red because the big leg monkey is red. Ooh, maybe I'll make it Rob Burnt Sienna. No, let's just go with red. Quinacridone. Oh, Quinacridone light. Let's do it. That's a good one. No name brand Quinacridone light. I love this color because it is super bright. Look at that. But it's also transparent. It's a transparent red. <clears throat> All right, try not to be bored by the inactivity going on over here. I'll wave my hand in front of it periodically so that you know I'm still alive and that you're actually watching something in progress. <clears throat> Here we go. Yes! Look at that! That is a dream come true. It's the icing on the cherry cake. Whoa, I'm so glad I bought this tube of paint. I use it for almost nothing, but when I do use it, it is the best thing in the house. This is perfect. This is better than I could have imagined. I wanted to brighten this, but I didn't want it so bright that um, I want it. I don't want it to look like a graphic design, even though it is a graphic design. And it's it's a actually it's a drawing depicting. I mean, a painting depicting a graphic design, just like a Monet is a painting depicting a pond or a haystack. This is not, or if we want to get, if we want to get art school hilarious, we'll say it's like Magritte. This is not a pipe. This is not a graphic design. This is a painting of a graphic design. And as a painting of a graphic design, I don't want it to become a graphic design by painting it solid, super bright. So we're going to paint it less bright and less solid. Let the gray show through, let the, let the um, paint strokes show, brush strokes. This logo took me a long time to develop. The hanging P and the hanging K and the hanging M. I love it. Well, actually the P isn't hanging. The hanging M, the hanging K, hanging, hanging K. All the other letters scrunched up towards the top here. I love it so much. I love the way it turned out. Well, cave dwellers, we're getting close to the end. If you have any questions, ask me now or forever. Lose your opportunity to ask me a question on Saturday the 14th of March, 2020. Famous punny year, the punniest year to date, the year of perfect vision. Or is it the year of perfect hindsight? Because hindsight is always 2020. So maybe we're looking back through time during this year. Let's do some reevaluation. What are we doing here? and why. One thing I learned is that we spend all our time in life trying to escape the body, spiritual people. Praying, uh, meditating, practicing black magic, trying to escape the body. But yet, here we are in a body. And if you believe in incarnations, and even if you don't, you're in a body, you might as well put it to use. And if you believe in incarnations, you incarnated into a body for a reason. So why are you trying to escape it? And we don't even use magic and mysticism to escape the body. We just use movies, telling stories. Ah, 
Sova Liska, my hero, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm live painting. This is my painting. I just did the logo here. What do you think? I'm, you're actually the close-up camera. The YouTube cam is doing the lighting. Whoa, excuse me. It's a bump. I'm producing this myself because I don't have a producer, but let's go back here. I'll give you a, a longer view. Oops. Dropping things. Sova Liska. Sova Liska. You're so great. Thanks for being here. Your Instagram has inspired me to see many movies, one of which I actually followed through and watched. There was a, a robot on the roof of a spaceship, and it had its foot stuck, and then they shot its foot off, I believe, and there were a bunch of robots looking mournfully at it. It was pretty, it was moving. Thank you. You and Astralize, I think, are quite a pair on Instagram, although you're not even a pair. You're just two people I happen to follow one of which I'm related to, for better or worse. Now then, um, Sovaliska, I can't believe Sovaliska's here. Everybody, Sovaliska, one of the best Instagrams in the Instagram. Sovaliska, this is Senora Guadalupe, and this is the Peg Leg Monkey. The dead, pe dead Peg Leg Monkey over here. The soul of the Peg Leg Monkey is here. You can tell it's a soul because it's two-dimensional. It's being torn out of his body by Senora Guadalupe because she's the psycho pomp, right? The Black Madonna. And here we have, this is a cover to a comic book that doesn't exist on the, but this side is the front cover, this side is the back cover, night and day. Staples go here on this police call box. That's how, that's where we are on this one, buddy. Wow, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate that. Um, I'm using some cartooning sticks with the crowd in the background, painting them all violet, right, all one color. The logo I want to pop out, but yet be subdued at the same time. The word bubble is a skull. Peg Leg Monkey is getting, or Montgomery Blanc is getting the news of the death of Peg Leg Monkey, and he's like, dead? You mean alive, right? And the guy on the phone says, read my lips, dead. Well, it actually says defunct, but I, I feel like that's too pretentious. Just because I wanted to use the word defunct, which I learned from Zippy the Pinhead back in the day. So let's fix that up right now. Need some gray. So Valiska, so Valiska, my country tis of thee. Here we go. D E. Oh, he's saying, he's spelling it. D E A. D. And I don't like when my words go off the edge. I had a, I had a painting of a god in a landscape. It was an Easter Island guy, and he, he was speaking. He was saying, boom, boom, boom. And when people saw that, because I had the booms going off the edge of the painting, people saw it and they read it as boo, boo, boo. <laughs> I didn't even see it. I didn't even see that it said boo, boo, boo. Boo, boo, boo. It's kind of disheartening. D I mean, there's definitely something less threatening about a giant god yelling boo, boo, boo than there is when he's yelling boom, boom, boom. Obscuring it, but leaving it intact. Not too intact, because I, it's dark. And it shows through, and in, especially in lettering, if you let the underpainting or any kind of palimpsest exist underneath lettering, it obscures it, and then people are like, does it say boo, boo, boo? It ruins your communication. Speaking of communication, uh, inspired by Carl Jung and a dream I had where I was reading a book called Ultimus, The Things We Do, my shrink suggested to me, hey, why don't you make this book? So I started the book, drawing, and then writing about the drawing in the style of a, a grade school reading book. You know how they had all kinds of subjects in these books, and you would just read articles. First one was about sports, second one was about optics. So it's just, I pick a subject and I do a page. And I gave it to my string, I'm like, hey, I started Ultimus. And he's like, oh, I like this picture. Okay, three pictures so far. And he's like, I like this one. I can't read any of it though. He gives me the book back. Because my penmanship. It's not very helpful, shrink. Nothing. I'm gonna make, he's gotta say, dead. Ah! Now I'm getting it. And everything else goes in between. 
Oh, see the things you discover by doing, and I. I hope this is entertaining, but to you, Sobolinska, but not entertaining in a way where, you know, derision. I hope you're not laughing at me in derision. I've seen your paintings, and I've seen how you work. Remember, just because you can paint doesn't mean everybody else sucks. All right, here we go. D-E, uh, this is the space in the middle. A, E. Okay, I'm going to have to give dashes in there. To, there we go. The dashes are the universal symbol of spelling. Universal symbol of spelling, the dash. Whoa, that's so great. I'm so glad I did that. Oh, that makes it. That makes the painting. I feel like I can stop now and forever hold my peace because now the painting is its going somewhere. There's very little left to do here. I have to fix up some of her hands and the peg leg monkey's hand is lost. Oh, I'm doing. I'm working on this moon. That's a big chunk. That's gotta. That's gotta come together. That moon needs to be more like that, but creamier. So I'm gonna add some white to this yellow ochre that's on my palette already. Let me see. We got. I got the palette spatula going. Oh, what if I just make it white like this? Interesting. What will happen? What will happen? Running out of time. Counter's going down. Spatula palette. Here we go. End. Right over the top of a kid's head. Oh. Okay. And over the spine of the comic. Doesn't exist. Oh, now we're talking. See, this is actually an astronomical image. This is what's really going on up in space. That's why the moon is fake. Because if it was real, that kid would never be able to lift it. All right, that moon is great. I love the way the the thing slashed it on there. Maybe I can get it even thicker. That's all I have. That's all I mixed up, unfortunately. Now the kid of course, is Mexican. And he's not really a kid, he's an angel, but even so. So, because he's Mexican, I'm gonna use an earth tone and add white. Give him some flesh tone. Flesh tone for the earth tone. I'm not gonna add white, I'm gonna add light portrait pink. Let's see what happens when I do that. Everything is an experiment because I don't know what I'm doing. Now then, there we go, that's Nice and orange, and earth tony. Earth to tony, earth tony. Okay, it's not bad. Let's do it. Uh, I don't know what he looks like. Doesn't look happy. No, oh, my candle went out. I hope that doesn't mean that Virgin of Guadalupe is. Oh. Well, I ran out of time because I wasn't paying attention to Cave Dweller on YouTube. And I was working the show on Instagram mostly, so to you there's not much action happening. But it was not probably exciting because I wasn't looking in, into your eyes. With the love from my heart like I am now. Cave Dweller on YouTube, thank you for joining me. And if you're seeing this in edit, You'll see me work the Instagram crowd because I'm going to just edit these two two shots together. It'll be great. I'll see you next time. Uh, Tuesday, 4 p.m. Central. Come and watch me. Thank you. And I look away to end the stream. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Goodbye.